Congratulations, you just got your new Baratza ESP coffee grinder from FrenchPressCoffee.com and you want to know how to use it? Well, we're going to show you how to do that today, how to put it together, how to operate it, how to clean it, take care of it, and get the best cup of coffee here on FrenchPressCoffee.com. When you first receive your Baratza Encore ESP coffee grinder and unpack it, you're going to find a few key parts with the device. First of all is going to be your bean hopper. We'll go into the assembly of this later on. Inside of your catch container, which is right on the front of the unit, you're going to find the cleaning brush, a catch cup for espresso grinds, and we'll talk about that a little later as well. Your switch, which is going to be your on-off switch, this will need to be attached to the side of the device. You'll also find a small tray. This is going to be placed underneath the Espresso Grounds catch cup. A small piece of paper, which is going to have a QR code on it that you can scan to get information about the device from Baratza's website. Also inside of this bag are going to be two small metal shims. These are going to allow you to change uh, and adjust your grind We'll talk about that in another video. And then finally, of course, you'll have your grounds catch cup, which you will use for all of your coffee grounds for your general everyday coffee grinding needs. Your first step when setting up your new Baratza Encore ESP grinder is going to be to take your bean hopper container and your two coffee grounds catch cups, and Baratza recommends that you then wash these with some warm soapy water, wash them out, and then set them aside to dry, give them a little time to dry out, and then they'll be ready to go on to the next step. Moving on to the assembly of your Baratza Encore ESP, first thing you're going to want to do is take a look at the top of the unit, and specifically, you're going to want to look at the grinding burrs that are right here, uh, which will be sitting underneath your coffee beans hopper. Specifically, this is important to mention because you may find that the outer ring has become a little bit dislodged, or maybe a little dislodged during shipment. What you'll want to do is line up the small red hash mark, which is on this outer ring, with the small red hash mark, which is on the inner body of the device, and then just simply press down and it'll slide right into place. The removal of this is going to be very much the same, simply pulling it up and then putting it back into place. This will be useful for when you're cleaning your device, which we will talk about later. Another thing that's important to mention is that the rubber gasket, which sits on top of the outer grinding ring, uh, the burr, is going to be in place and should be in place when you first receive your device. However, if it is not, you can simply remove that outer ring grinding burr. And if your gasket is out of place, just simply take and place it right into that inner ring. It'll slide snugly into place. And then after that is done, you can then again find that red hash mark that is on the outer ring, line that up with the red hash mark that's on the inner ring of the device, and then simply press your burr back into place. Now let's put everything with your Baratza Encore ESP grinder together so you can get ready to start grinding coffee. First, you'll want to set your device on your countertop, on a table, something that's nice and sturdy so that you can easily work with the device. We're going to take our beans hopper and we're going to place this on top of the unit. You're going to notice that there's a white hash mark, a little white line, right here on the beans hopper. This hash mark is going to line up on top of your Baratza Encore ESP with this small arrow that you'll see on the device. Line that up, press down with a little bit of pressure, and then just start turning, and you'll hear these clicks. Those clicks are going to tell you that the beans hopper is now settled into place, and this way you know that it's not going to come loose from the device when you start grinding. Next, we're going to install our power switch, and this is very easy to do. Inside of it, you're going to notice that it is keyed. It has a flat side and a circular side, and you can line this up with this small switch that you see here on the inside of the device, and then just simply press that into place. Now, if this is pointed towards this small circle or the O, that means that the device is turned off. You'll want to leave the switch turned towards the off setting firstly, and of course, you want to work with the device when it's unplugged. 
Next, you will want to decide what kind of coffee grounds you're going to be grinding. If you're going to be grinding espresso coffee grounds, and especially if you're going to be using a portafilter for brewing espresso, then you'll want to make use of the espresso catch cup. Again, this is a very small catch cup, but the beauty of this is that it's made to catch your coffee grounds and then be able to pair up very easily with portafilter. So, if you're going to be grinding espresso with the ESP, you'll want to take this small tray, which is going to fit right underneath the outlet for where your coffee grounds are going to exit as the unit grinds your coffee. This is going to keep your espresso catch cup in place. Now that you have that, you can simply place the catch cup directly into its small receptacle right there, and now you'll be able to start grinding espresso beans using the Encore ESP. And one thing that you may be wondering about that espresso catch cup is why does it have this rubber gasket on top of it. Well, this is important because if it is off, once you have ground your espresso into the espresso catch cup, this should fit very easily into a standard espresso portafilter. This is probably about what you're going to find with most of your at-home espresso brewing machines. However, if you have one that is a little wider, then you can, using this rubber gasket, place this into place around the top of your espresso grounds catch cup. And this way, if you have a larger portafilter, it will slide into place. And this way you can use this with a variety of portafilters for brewing espresso at home. If you're going to be grinding for normal coffee drinks, such as our favorite French press or automatic brew and etc., then you'll want to use the larger coffee grounds catch cup. And this just simply slides into place right in front of the unit. Once you feel it press back all the way and there's no more room for it to go, you know that it is set and ready to go. Before we start grinding some coffee with the Baratza Encore ESP, let's talk about why it's called the Baratza Encore ESP. Well, very simply, there are 40 grind settings on this device. Starting from over here on my far right, we're going to have our beginning setting and then moving all the way to my left, we're going to have 40. Now, looking at 0 to 20, we have a marking of ESP. This means that this is our grind settings for grinding espresso or anything that's going to be an automatic brew that requires a very fine grind. Additionally, when we turn our beans hopper, we're going to be turning in very small and fine increments. This is going to allow us to gradually increase or decrease the size of our coffee grounds. Once we reach the 20 mark, then as we start to continue to turn our beans hopper all the way towards 40, we're going to start increasing the grind size, which is going to allow us to brew for other methods such as French press, automatic, pour over, and etc. As a quick guide, if you're going to be brewing for espresso, you'll want to turn your beans hopper to about the 15 mark here on the top of the device. You can play with this to find your best grind, but Baratta does suggest using the 15 mark for grinding espresso. Then, if you're going to be brewing for AeroPress, you're going to want to turn the device up to about 22. And then moving on up to French Press, you're going to be looking at about 32. Using these settings, you'll be able to dial in your grind size so that you can get the best possible grind for your cup of coffee, and it's always worth playing around a little bit to find what works best for the type of beans that you're using and the type of device that you're using to brew your coffee. What makes the Baratza Encore ESP coffee grinder very unique? That is going to be the fact that's going to allow you to grind espresso, specifically because when our beans hopper is turned towards the zero and moving towards the 20 mark, and we start to gradually increase, our burrs are much more close together. We are turning and adjusting in very, very small increments. Once we reach the halfway mark at 20 and we start to then turn our bean hopper from there, the offset between our burrs greatly increases, and this allows for coffee beans to come much more easily through the space between those burrs and get ground up in a more coarse fashion, which of course is very useful for a French press, pour over, automatic brew, and things along those lines. Now, before we continue on to the most fun part, which is grinding coffee beans with your Baratza Encore ESP, we have a favor to ask. Now, it takes a lot of time, 
energy, and study to make great videos for coffee devices like the Baratza Encore ESP. We do a lot of work here at FrenchPressCoffee.com, so we have a favor to ask of you, which is please subscribe to our channel. Please turn on the notifications as well so that you know when new videos are being uploaded. That way you can keep up to date with coffee news, new devices, and new techniques for your at-home coffee shop. And finally, make sure to check out and like all of our videos so that you can follow along with everything that we do here at FrenchPressCoffee.com. We really appreciate your support, and please make yourself a great coffee for the next step. All right, now it's time for the really fun part, which is grinding coffee with your brand new Baratza Encore ESP. If you have not already done so, and we do suggest that you wait until this step, it's now time to plug in your device. You'll want to carefully unwrap it and plug it into your wall power. Now, for your usage at home, you will likely be pouring your coffee beans into the beans hopper that we've shown you how to place on top of the device. For our usage here in the studio today, we're going to be using this very cool Baratza Gear Single Serve Coffee Bean Hopper. You can find this on FrenchPressCoffee.com. This is cool because this allows you to grind a smaller amount of coffee beans with your device. That way, if you're just grinding for yourself, or maybe you're making just some very small uh, drinks, you can use this and use less coffee beans. So now we'll take this, we'll put it into place just as we did our bean hopper, and then turn it a little bit so that it's ready to go. Now we need oh, beans. Look at that. Magic. Well, it wasn't really magic, but it felt like magic. Get yourself some good coffee beans, because now comes the fun part, which is going to be adding your coffee beans to your bean hopper. Now, depending on the type of coffee drink that you're going to be brewing, you will want to also decide what kind of coffee beans you're going to be using. If you're going to be brewing an espresso drink, use espresso. If you're going to be brewing for just about any other type of coffee drink, use some great coffee beans. You can find some, again, on FrenchPressCoffee.com. Now, in my case, I'm going to measure the amount of coffee beans that I need using the cap to my Baratza Gear Single Serve Coffee Bean Hub. So we'll about fill this up, and now I'm going to pour these directly into the hub. All right, ready to go. Now we'll place the lid in place. And again, if you were using your bean hopper at home, you could simply fill this up with the proper amount of beans that you were going to use for the number of drinks you're going to make at that time, or maybe over the course of the day. But remember, it's best to grind your coffee beans when you're going to be crafting your drink. This way you're going to get the best possible taste out of your coffee. So make sure to wait until it's time to make your beverage to grind your beans. Now, we're going to decide what type of setting we're going to use on our Baratza Encore. In our case, we love French Press Coffee here at FrenchPressCoffee.com, so we're going to turn our bean hopper to the 32 mark on the top of our device. Again, this is Baratza's recommended setting for grinding for French Press Coffee. You may find that you need to adjust this ever so slightly, and that's where you can play around with getting to know the grind for your Baratza Encore ESP, but we're going to go ahead and use that suggested setting. Once we have turned it in place, all we need to do is now flip our power switch to the on position on the device, and we'll have our coffee beans grinding. And you know that the device is done grinding beans in the case of the standard coffee bean hopper because you won't see any beans left in there. However, keep in mind that again, if you did add a lot of beans to your bean hopper, you want to grind specifically for how much coffee you need for your beverage. So just keep an eye on the coffee grounds catch container here on the front. Luckily, it is clear, so it's easy to see what you are grinding. In my case, I could tell the machine was done grinding because I could hear that it was at the end of its grind cycle. And this is my freshly ground coffee that I've gotten as a result of grinding with my Baratza Encore ESP. And let's take a look at the coffee that we just ground with the Baratza Encore ESP. Now again, we were using Baratza's suggested setting of 32 on the 
bean hopper for grinding for French press. Now with French press coffee, as you may or may not know, you usually want your coffee to be a little more on the coarse side. We found that this may be just ever so slightly a little too fine for usage with a French press. Now remember, there are some various factors that come into play here, but specifically you want to decide what kind of coffee grounds you want. So in the case of the Baratza Encore ESP, you could increase the coarseness of your grind by gradually turning your bean hopper towards the 40 mark on the top of the device. And there you have it. That's everything that you need to know to get to start using your brand new Baratza Encore ESP coffee grinder. Remember, the ESP stands for espresso. This way you can grind espresso using an automatic grinder at home, but you can also grind for many other type of beverages that you might make using this awesome new device. So we hope you found this useful and we've covered everything that you need to know. But if not, make sure to leave us a comment in the comment section on this video or get in touch with us at frenchpresscoffee.com. Tune in, subscribe, and turn on our notifications for more great videos coming your way. And as always, thank you for tuning in to FrenchPressCoffee.com. I'm Brian, and I'll see you next time. Did you like that coffee video? Give us a thumbs up. It's right there. Make sure to subscribe, and I'm going to tell you an awesome coffee quote. Oh, it's right there. I'll wait. I got things to keep me busy. Right there. Got it? All right. So check it out. Chocolate, men, and coffee. Some things are better rich.